exciting news. Season three of Meet the Redmonds podcast launches June 2nd. Join us, Mark and Bev Redmond, every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. EST on Facebook, YouTube, and OCPI TV for inspiring conversations about faith, family, and marriage. Hey, hey, everybody. It's Bev. And it's Mark. And we are the Redmonds. Welcome to another edition of Meet the Redmonds. We're hanging out here in Seattle on our rooftop and coming to you with a part two of myths or five myths of Christian marriage. We did five, what, two weeks ago? Right, we did those in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We were doing that via Zoom. Yeah. I was in Chicago. You were in Seattle. Yeah. Now we're back in Seattle together only for about a week. And then we're going back to Chicago. And we'll commuter get, couple. Yeah, so that, we'll get some we'll get some episodes in Chicago as well. Yes. So today is continuing our focus on marriage and the myths about Christian marriage. So last uh, our last show on this last episode, we started out with five myths, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have misconceptions about Christian marriage. Everything from uh, God is right there at every turn. Like we have angels sitting on our wings and things. We're real people. So, let's go. What was the first myth? Number one was, love is all you need. All we need. It's a nice idea. Right. But you got to put some elbow grease behind okay. it. Yep. Number two was, we are soulmates. I think you work yourself into soulmates. We may turn this into another episode. Like, what is a soulmate? What is a soulmate? And is it biblical? Is it biblical? Is it a soul tie? What is this concept of being a soulmate? I tend to think it's people saying we're made for each other, that we were uh, almost cosmically or divinely meant to be together. Eh, all right. I don't know. Number three was uh -huh. prayer conquers all. Prayer is powerful. We don't want to negate that, but just like, you know, <laughs> love is all you need, Prayer also requires some work behind it. Right. Number four, sex is not important. To who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> yes, intimacy, sex, very much important. There are stages and phases in marriage where it may be more prominent in your relationship than others, and for various reasons. But it is important. It's a love language. Right. And number five, mm -hmm. Christian marriage is boring. You're boring. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me cough. <laughs> I take that as an insult. Right. I mean, only if... <laughs> Only boring people are boring people. It has nothing to do with Christianity. Right. Uh, <laughs> so you, you saw little snippets of our first five myths. And if you want to go back and check out the whole episode of the first five myths of well, marriage, you, you go to Meet the Reppins on YouTube or Facebook. You go to videos on YouTube and you can scroll down and find. We'll even season, link it at the end of right, the show. Season three episode what was it? Nine, eight? Seven, eight? Well, anyway, just go to Meet the Revenants on YouTube, go to the videos, and you'll see us, and you can click on this that particular episode and watch it in conjunction with this part two yeah. of Myths of Marriage. All right, next set of myths. So we're on to... Six, seven, six. eight, nine, ten. What? Yes. What did I do? You count it out for us. Oh. Six, seven, eight, that two. Okay. Always a teacher. Okay. Okay, number six. Marriage is for everyone. What do you say? Well, I don't think so. Doesn't no. the Bible say that it's good to be single or... Single is being honorable, too. You can focus on what it does say is you can focus on the work of the Lord. Uh, but they're both active states that we are allowed to be, and not one is better than the other. I think we spend a lot of time trying to convince people to get married or think that that's their desired thing. But really, that should be something that the Lord has put on your heart to be. That may happen. It may not happen. But whatever state you find yourself in, be content. 
And everybody's gonna say, well, Bev, that sign says you got a ring on your finger. You got this big hunk of guy sitting next to you. I spent many years single. And if I waited until I found that right person, you're gonna miss a lot of life. So I would not spend my time looking at what I don't have, but thinking about what I do have and how to make the best of that. Yep. Also, there's a Bible scripture, Matthew chapter 19, verse 10. We'll put it up. That kind of expounds on uh, God's goal for marriage. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone, and that's not a put down. And <laughs> there's some people who really don't want to be married or married again because they've been there, done that, tried that. And they're like, ah, that's okay. I can do this thing by myself. I will honestly say, for heaven, if for God parts us in any kind of way by sickness, anything like that, because he's not going anywhere, neither am I, I'm not getting married anymore. Oh, you want a response from me? <laughs> I want the same commitment. I'm not getting married again either. I might date. No. <laughs> no, I'm I don't. You know, it. I don't think I would because I I've poured so much of my heart into you and build so much together with you. I don't think I could. I, I, I don't think I could do it again. Well, and I'm going to give shout out to my hairstylist, Linda. He's like, you don't know what you would do. So stop making declarations. How about that? So what does that supposed to mean? You, you would? I, we don't know anything of what God has for us in the future. My desire is my life is so full with Mark that I don't really remember a whole lot before then. And so rich, and I can't imagine feeling this way about someone else. That part I know. I, I don't want to go down the aisle again at this moment. I don't think I would do it again because I've reached that crotchety old man phase. You know, the old man that tells the people don't run in my grass, stay out of my lawn. Out of my lawn. I've reached that phase now that the slightest thing kind of to who? You know, no. I mean, you've kind of, you kind of been desensitized to it. But somebody <laughs> new coming into it, no, they don't want to hear all that. I'm married to a crotchety old right. guy. I'm that crotchety old man now. But I've been desensitized. That I said I would never be, mm -hmm. but I'm him now. Okay. So I don't think I would want to put that burden on anybody, anybody else. Anybody else. Right. Just me. Right. I'm kind of like the... The black Bill Barr. So if you know who Bill Barr is, he's a comedian. And he has this kind of crotchety old man delivery. Okay. Yeah, right, we watched a movie with him yes. the other day called Old Dads, and it was it was funny. It was not for the Christians. <laughs> <laughs> but he has an old man crotchety yes. vibe, and that's kind of me. There's a, a definite disclaimer on that, uh, but yes. Right. All right. Okay, so number two. Uh huh. What you got? The husband should be the stronger in faith in a marriage. I also think that people think that generally the husband is going to be the stronger individual, period, because of the headship. Um, I think it's a lot of pressure to put on the husband to be every thing to the entire marriage. We were saying this before we got on here, that you really do have, if you are a leader outside of marriage, you know your team, you know who you're working with, you know their strengths. There's no way you can do it all. I think the same applies to Christian marriage and the couple uh, and how they live out their life in faith. You don't have to do everything. And that doesn't make you weak. Right. And, uh, you know, some people may equate, well, you can't be the head of the household if you're not the, the driving engine mm -hmm. of your family spirit. And I just don't think that's true. My mother and father, my mother, well, in their marriage, my mother was the driving engine spiritually and throughout their faith walk. 
but that did not negate my father's role. We all knew who the man was. Mm -hmm. Whether he led a scripture or a prayer, we knew daddy was daddy. And his faith walk was totally unique from my mother. My mother was president of the mission board and she uh, did the announcements in church and she was this, this, this all over the place. She was very involved. My daddy went to church. He was an usher. He did his ushering. He got his coffee and he came home. <laughs> and his rule was, I'm going to early morning service. If you rolling with me, we out the door at seven o'clock. <clears throat> but you saw both of them actively involved in faith. Mm -hmm. And what I remember you telling me is that your dad, as the leader, just made sure that it was done. Right. He did not have to touch it all, but mm -hmm. made sure it was done. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we were going to choir rehearsal, uh, prayer meetings, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And my dad just reinforced what our mom kind of pushed us toward. toward. Yeah. But, you know, it was not, you know, my father was not the, you know, the orator that my mother was, but that did not make him any less of, you know, the, the man in charge. Mm -hmm. The scripture does say something about being evenly yoked. I think you both have to be believers of the same mindset. Mm -hmm. But who does what in that? That doesn't mean the husband or the wife has to carry all of the burden. How do you split that up? What do you think we do? I think we're pretty much on an even keel, and I think it's because of the way that we were raised in church. Mm -hmm. You know, your parents were super active. My parents were super active. The children were super active. Mm -hmm. So I think we kind of have that evenly yoked mindset. Mm -hmm. And we'll put that scripture up. Yeah, I think... What I witnessed with my parents, my dad is a pastor. We were we were the, his starter church uh, in, in many ways, but there was no question. My mom, as you say, was cold, cold in her word, cold on our knees, cold in raising us as children. Uh, they shared a lot of the duties. I'm trying to. I couldn't imagine one without the other. They both played such a vital role. But my mom was also a spiritual leader by making sure we knew our word, knew a lot, and knew how. <laughs> she always said, stop running up under your dad. So, and you know giving what? him space. And yes. you know what? Not to interrupt you, but when my father passed, that didn't stop. Mm -hmm. I just knew instinctively, I'm getting up going to church on Sunday. Whether anyone told me to or not, that's just what I did. I do believe that the scripture, the speak clause of a scripture says, and when they're old, those things that our parents put in us won't depart from us. They may look different. Proverbs 22 and 6. Spiritual head here. Yes. Train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. And when? And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I mean, that's one of the first verses you learned in Sunday school. So. Yeah, that and Jesus wept. <laughs> Wages of sin is death. Right. We had a, a starter pack as kids. <laughs> Scripture starter pack. Yes. <laughs> the little things that you know. But the things that you, it's going to be hard to shake it out of you once it's put in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. What's next? Number, wait, that was six, seven. Number eight. All right. I got to get out the habit of saying one, two, three. It's six, seven. <laughs> this is eight. All right. Married people do everything together. I'm leaving as soon as we're done. <laughs> I'm going to get my nails done. Several of them. You notice them on screen. Several? They're not, they're not well. I, I, That's not, put your hand down so people can't see them. <laughs> so, uh, no, you. <laughs> there are things you will do together. <laughs> And I think we're very, we're close as a husband and a wife. And I enjoy spending time with my husband, but I also enjoy time jumping in my Telluride, throwing that sunroof open, listening to my own playlist, hallelujah, <laughs> and going. Well, you know what? You know, you have your set of friends. You know, I have my set of friends. We we do some things together. We do. But sometimes we, we operate as separate entities. You need, I don't know who 
Jews have had this myth that everything is together. We are one. We're not the only one. You know, I got flack one time by saying I don't go grocery shopping with my wife. Ooh. I don't know who. I, I was talking to somebody. Yeah, somebody. Okay. <laughs> somebody interjected, oh, you don't go grocery shopping with your wife? I was like, no. Let me get my Starbucks in my hand and go down there to those and grocery aisles for me, by myself. And for me, I like to go grocery shopping without the hindrance of someone in. Stay out the Twinkies. That's what it is. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's one thing we just don't do together. And there's, it, no, that's not exactly true. There are times when we are. Right. If we happen to be together, but yes. if you say. I'm going to the grocery store. I don't jump up and say, I want to come too. No. <laughs> and if he says he's going, I'm like, cool. That's right. one less thing I have to do. Exactly. So I don't yeah. think you have to do everything together. Now, there's some things we enjoy doing together. When we were, when COVID had introduced itself to the world and shut things down, mm -hmm. we found ourselves doing things more together. Uh, one yeah. of the first things we really, really gravitated to was watching basketball games in the bubble. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only were they good games, but it's just something that we just started doing. We did. And now that is a, a staple in our relationship. Come June, come May, June, you're going to find us watching basketball. We talk basketball. about sports. We, what's, one of my questions was, like, what's going on in politics? What's going on in sports? Mm -hmm. So, And we chop it up regularly on that traveling together and then there's some trips we take apart mm -hmm. uh, it's good to <laughs> scripts is building you up on your most holy faith um, to that end you're a still you are still a person as well as part of a couple you may have some interests that your husband doesn't and vice versa i love watching some madam secretary oh i love some po political drama as Homer and, Simpson would say, boring. And Mark <laughs> is in there with Bill Barr and the Hangover people and all of those folks. Playing my video games. Mr. Doom. And, and I will come and sit in there and watch and rub his head and like, how you doing? What's going on? But it doesn't mean that every moment we're there together. No. Oh. Okay. Number four. Children come first. Okay, so this is going to be a challenging one for many people because there are a wide variety of situations out there. So I don't want to make a blanket statement. Uh, you, it's hard when you have little ones. Yeah, little ones. I think is the the you got to put that in perspective. Of course, little ones need more attention. They can't function. They can't function. So, yes. Little ones, yes. Mm -hmm. I think there's a degree of priority yeah. with little ones. Yes. And you also, and I want to give individuals who have uh, families with disabilities as part of it, there are a wide variety of reasons that your children will pop up into the first slot. However... You, after God, it's you and your hubby. You're the ones who stood at the altar. You're the ones who actually made the babies. You all have to take, we have to take care of each other. And I think that's also true for different types of family dynamics. A blended family, adoptive families. I still think the spouse comes first. And there are times, and there, look, there are times in Adult children. You are not hardly bothered no, I'm just saying, your adult children try to, you know, get your time and take you off center. The wife still comes first. Yes, your spouse comes first. We are very fortunate that we have two great adult children. Uh, they don't do those kinds of manipulative things. If they could, they would. No, they would. Well, we kind of put a, we nip it in the bud sometimes. Really? No, it ain't a problem, but they will say, Dad, I need, Bev, I need. Yes. Yeah. But that's, 
they're never going to cease to be our children. I don't want to present our babies like they are a problem to us and have been. If we can do it, we're going to do it. If we cannot, we won't. But they hardly encroach upon our time. No, they don't. I'm just, I'm just jazzed. He's being crotchy. Being crotchy. I'm that old man. Stay out my grass. <laughs> Bless him. Pray for him. <sighs> it's a faith check. Yep. All right. What's next? Six, seven, eight, nine. Uh -huh. Number ten. Am I still saying one, two, three, four? I don't know. We, we probably have it all mixed up. That's why we have graphics. We okay. Get it. We will get it correct. Number ten. Christian couples never go to bed angry. Now, okay, so this is this is violation of scripture. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that you never let the sun go down on your wrath. Um, and we'll put that verse on there. You know where it's from? <laughs> I don't, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> it's, it's in the Bible. That part I do know. That said, I have no wrath towards you, but I really made me toast and warm. But okay, we're not going to solve this tonight. We're not going to solve this today, but we'll have to come back to it. So you have gone to bed Absolutely. angry with me. I've been warmer than burnt toast. Yes. <laughs> so, had to sit down and apologize for it with the Lord. But like, no. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. I've done the same thing. I get on my side of the bed. I turn over. I'm just going to go to sleep. Let it work itself out in the morning. Keep my little warm thoughts to myself. Yes, but like you said, you said something uh -huh. when we did the first part that a good hot meal <laughs> and some rest can alleviate a lot of <laughs> being hangry and sleepy. Ninety-nine percent of the arguments can be traced back to lack of food and lack of sleep. Right. I have no official data on this, but I'm just saying from my own judgment. The next day, I'm like, why was I so upset? Yeah, that's true. You wake up and you can almost forget. Not no. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I would tell you it one thing. It just may not matter to me. Now, I would tell you one thing that I'm not a proponent of at all. This, you got to go sleep on the couch business. No. No, no, no. If I want to sleep on the couch, that's my prerogative. But I'm not going to be made to go sleep on the couch because we and you don't get along or something's going to you mad at me. And you ain't going to go sleep on the couch either. You just scoot them thighs on over to my side of the bed and we'll, we'll go to sleep and we'll wake up and we'll, we'll worry about it tomorrow. I have spoken. Big fellas talking. Right, I don't believe in that. You have to go sleep in, in the guest room. But, I don't mm. necessarily believe in it either, but I'm also not crazy. If you're that upset and you need to go in there and chill out, go on in there and move over so I can take the bed and go to sleep. I mean, if that's my prerogative, if that's what I choose, mm -hmm. then yeah, I'm going to sleep in the other room. But I, I But agree making with you. someone. Now, watch this. It's on camera now. Mm -hmm. I agree. We had this discussion this morning. My husband thinks I never say, babe, you're right. So, babe, you're right. Uh, I don't believe in mandating my husband to do anything. First of all, physically, I cannot mandate that he does anything. Exhibit A. Second, I'm not in charge of my husband. I care about him, but I cannot mandate or direct that you get out of our bed, our bed, and go sleep somewhere else. Unless you stink. <laughs> <laughs> that don't even make sense. Oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> so there we go. We got all 10 myths in Christian marriage. And we will list them all again at the end of this episode. So any last minute comments, suggestions, wisecracks you want to make before we wrap this up? <laughs> I have no more wisecracks. Most of them will probably end up on the edit floor. All right, I'm going to take this out, this out, this out, cut, crop, bam.
but it'll come back in our blooper reel. Um, I don't have a lot of extra comments. I just think people like to have a lot to say about mm -hmm. marriage, about Christians. They put, try to make us saints. We're not. We love the Lord. We are imperfect people who love the Lord and we strive to please Him every day. That's what we do. We live our life according to that. Uh, I believe that it will take us to heaven, but should we be wrong, we have not done anything to have a lesser life. We live a morally upright and clean. Right. And we're going to do an episode, like you said, on soulmates. Mm -hmm. That was number two from the first part mm -hmm. of Myths About Marriage, because we want to know, is soulmates biblical? Is that something that we should strive to find or, you know, or is it just talk? Well, we're going to talk about romant maybe romantic myths, dating myths, <laughs> be myths. <laughs> uh, I think soulmates is in that toolkit, in that backpack of mythological things that tie a lot of people up. I've got to find my soulmate. There's only one. If that's the case, there would be no divorce. There would be no second marriages. There would be no forgiveness. All of There's so many different things that say, nah, to soulmates. And why do we need something to put on top of love? Love is the biggest and greatest proponent that God gives us. So you need to be in love and have a soulmate. I mean, wow. Wow. And a best friend. All of that. Yeah. Right. Your twin flame and all of that. Oh, love me. So that's another another episode. All right. Well, we got to get out of here. Because you already said you got to go get your nails done. Problems. Yeah. She got Wolverine claws going on right now. It's, it is a very <laughs> uncharacteristic quality. Oh, boy. Good statement. All right. So we're going to get out of here and we're going to end with our catchphrase. It's not my wife's way. It's not my husband's way. It's the, the Redman way. way. Peace. Bye. Exciting news. Season 3 of Meet the Redman's podcast launches June 2nd. Join us, Mark and Bev Redman, every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. EST on Facebook, YouTube, and OCPI TV for inspiring conversations about faith, family, and marriage.